Hi there, my name is Hannah Sheremy. This is the What is Fromcast podcast on the Podcastica Network. Hmm? Ah. Oh. Welcome to the show. My name is Alex. And I'm Lizzie. And we have our special guest that needs no introduction, but we're going to introduce him anyways. You know him as Frank. We all know him as Bob. Bob, man, thank you so much for joining us. What a time. What a time to be alive. <laughs> I'm telling you. Two. Season two. I'm telling wow. you, I know we had to do a lot to pull you away from Canada Day festivities. Oh boy. Is that That's what today only- is? That was yesterday. No, it was it was yesterday, but uh, we celebrate well into October. Okay. Here in here in Canada, we just don't we don't stop. It's just <laughs> every day is Canada Day. I'm we just need telling. a month and a half to recover. Well, oh yeah. my God. <laughs> I have a very I have a very good friend that lives in Quebec, and I keep telling her, "You guys are going to take us over with Zamboni technology. It's all That's about it. the Zamboni technology." Oh yeah, as we slowly, as we slowly and methodically make our way across the border in our Zambonis. Absolutely. And for those of you that are watching the show, thank you so much, and the fans. And if you'd like to subscribe to our channel, that would be even better. Um, right down there or there i don't know whatever it is um and it is sunday so that means it is from day and we are talking from the show has stopped or is in a hi- hiatus for a couple of uh months or so um as we like to as the kids like to say um right. and but we're still going we're still going um just a couple of little things if you haven't checked out our merch shop you can get these nice from shirts i know bob is in for at least 10 for all of his family um, easily at, easily <laughs> and you can look at the show notes or check out that link right there and um so bob what is your first thoughts of this season um, my first thoughts, uh, I was, well, I mean, dep- I guess it depends on what perspective I'm coming at it from, because as a, as an actor who was on the show and who knows, you know, knows a number of people still involved and gets to see people, it was a thrill to see some people come back, uh, mm-hmm. after, you know, it was, it was really cool to see, um, uh, what's it, uh, Lisa Ryder, you know? Pop yeah, back she's up. great. It's like, she's yeah, great. you know, like you kind of hope you get to see her again. My buddy Reed Price, uh, who's Tom, the bartender, getting to see him uh, unceremoniously dispatched, but then get to pop up again. Uh, you know, uh, the shining style. Yeah, uh, that was that was pretty cool. And seeing and, and also getting to see some of the fans kind of react to that. That was fun, of course. And then Sean Majumder getting to see him. Yeah. Again, that was a lot of fun. And the other thing I really loved, I will say, and this isn't has nothing to do with the plot or anything like that, but I really loved seeing how much extra uh, meat and how much extra time people got. I loved seeing Scott McCord, I think, is just a is a really gifted performer and getting to see him with extra stuff to chew on was a lot of fun. I thought he had some cool, cool moments and some weighty bits. I thought um, Ricky, Ricky, he had some. Uh, cool little cool little things to to do and some some interesting scenes and and Harold but I, I I just thought people had some interesting acting that they had to they had to do um a little bit more weighty and and you know my pal Nathan Simmons who I've known for forever who's a, a just a lovely and gifted actor who, who here in Halifax uh, he you know getting to see the work that he did as Elgin I thought was really uh really neat too I wish that um I wish that Phoebe Rex had been able to stick around a little bit longer. She played Sarah, who got the spike in the head. I'm going to tell you right now, I yeah. think they, I think they missed the mark with her. I really think yeah. they missed the mark because she, and we had her on the show. I don't know if you're yeah. aware of that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's right. She had, and you know, you read the the Facebook groups for someone that was in one episode. She was more memorable than people that were there for for multiple episodes. Yeah. I mean, she had such a good impact, and it would have been great to see someone like her and Julie kind of be friends. 
and see where that could have taken off or something else with the plot line. I think that yeah. they missed the mark on that, but I love what they did. It's just that it's just kind of a shame. Yeah. I mean, I, I get it from a storytelling perspective. I mean, the, like the, a story is not charity, right? Like a story is not something that you do for the purpose of, of giving characters to people or for just having a bunch of characters as a fun to look at. I mean, people have, there has to be a purpose to everything. And if anything, I would say that the show probably affords a little bit more um, roadway and, and mileage to a number of characters who might show up and then be gone, you know, a la walking dead lost stuff like that. Like you, you yeah. have opportunities for people to just kind of fly in and then go. And, and I appreciate that as a performer, because it means a show like this is going to have something for, you know, I mean, even I, even me, I feel very fortunate and lucky to have gotten to be one of the, the first ones kind of out to gate out of the gate to be on there and have a little arc and, you know, it comes to an end and, you know, you can lament that, but the fact is, you know, there's, there's, there's only so much for everybody and to get something is kind of cool uh, in, in and of itself and get to do it and get to say that you were, you were part of it. So I don't, you know, I don't, I don't lament that they would have had something. They only had meaningful opportunities and, and, and sort of plot service for each new p character that came along they only had a room for a few there's all it's already a pretty stacked oh um, no yeah yeah it's already a pretty stacked roster but uh but yeah, i thought i think they've done i think they've done great by everybody that they've brought in i i you know i thought there was some neat stuff neat stuff that went down yeah yeah absolutely cool so what are we drinking tonight guys name it i got I everything got right here in my desk. from wawa yeah i got all the everything that i need <laughs> we, we were we i didn't do a good job of marketing cocktails with with bob man but yeah, uh i know i i showed up with my cocktail so I, is that uh, now is that what you do on sundays you get yourself a nice drink and you watch the you watch the show no, well uh no i i seldom drink but i wanted to in honor of this yeah uh, i'd been looking forward to this glass all day it's oh, um great. sangria it oh you burned it <laughs> and, and Bob, I think some it. of our some of our listeners probably think that we do drink when we do this podcast. So it'd probably be better that we did drink because I think you know it um, might validate some. Of it would validate some of the yeah. the, the, the talk. Exactly. Um, exactly. You know, I do want to dive in a little bit. Um, let's just talk about like the first episode or the first couple of episodes. You, yeah. You know, and and Lizzie, please jump in whenever you want to jump in. You, oh, I don't you, want to cut you off. Then I'll get a nasty email. Well, that's fine. You can go right <laughs> ahead. Um, that that said, that said, you know what I love about this show is they really started where they left off. Like literally, the moment they left off, they yeah. started, and it looks like this season was a couple of weeks, if it was that much. Um, you, you know, I think it was like a week. I don't it, even think it was longer than a yeah. week. Yeah, it was really, really strange on on how yeah. quickly it was, you, you know. And so you're you were in this world for a little bit, and yeah. what I find really frustrating as a viewer is you're in this world, nothing is normal. Boyd has a conversation with his with his son, and he's like, "I went through a tree and I came out there," and yeah. and. Ellis is like, wait, let me get this straight. Now, this is coming from the same person that has to lock his his door up. His monsters come out with the yeah. with a stone talisman. Like, how does that not like jive? I, I I don't know. Maybe I'm just wrong. Um, it's uh no, it's an interesting thing, and I have given that a fair bit of thought. So one of the, am I got got to say uh, one of the neat experiences that I had with season two was my um, my youngest son, who's just like graduating high school this year. He just graduated last year. He He's all caught up. He watched uh -oh. all of it from the beginning. And then we watched a little bit of it together. And it was kind of fun getting to see. And then he, I, I had a, I had a um, uh, sort of a little side note. Uh, we filmed the second season of uh, King and Pawn. Um, yes. Oh, which wow. Which had a bunch of stuff to it. And, and you know, Reed Price, who plays Tom, he was the lead and I brought my son with me to, to on one of the shooting days just to just to kind of hang out. And he got to meet Reed. And it was interesting because I've known Reed for, you know, a long time and we've done a number of projects together. But my son had never met him. Uh, so he was kind of starstruck like he'd watched 
he'd watched a bunch of it. It was his first time kind of meeting someone in yeah. person that he'd only, whose face he'd only known from television. It was kind of a neat, a neat experience, but he and I shared an interesting thought about um, on that particular note, Alex. And it was that, you know, I, I was sort of relating it to a show like lost where it takes kind of a long time for the characters in the world to realize that, or even clue into, or, or even accept that there are things going on that are out of this world. Yeah. And so, and so naturally, you know, in that vein, in that context, when things are presented to them that appear to be out of this world, they, they have a disbelief or they deflect from it, or they have other explanations. Some, some are pretty quick to say, oh, there's weird stuff happening. And then other people say, no, 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 you're mistaken. It's just this and this and that. Whereas in this show, I do think one of the challenges that the creators have sort of set up for themselves is that nobody, literally no person should have any level of disbelief for any amount of crazy stuff that happens. I mean, don't you think like it, it just sort yeah. of like, it, right. Like if it went, yeah. So when it gets presented, you know, that, Hey, there's a tree. And if you fall into it, you come out in maybe a different year or a different place, literally to a person, every single person should go, yep, that checks out. I yeah. mean, I mean, what, <laughs> like how much weirder can it get than it already and, is? And right? first off um, a couple of things before I just want a little side note, folks, Please put in the chat what you're drinking because, you know, we don't like to drink alone and we certainly yeah. don't want Liz to drink alone. And there's all 12 of you or 15 of you, whoever, how many decide to show up. And when we do start talking faraway trees and stuff like that, you need to be a little bit oh, more loose yeah, yeah. with your thoughts. <laughs> yeah. Well, Absolutely. you need to buy into it a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're going to get into some lofty philosophical, you know, text here and go to some weird places. Yeah, yeah. You know, but no, I agree. I agree with you. I think it is. And I don't I, I mean, I, I it's I don't I don't see things like that and think to myself, oh, boy, have they ever messed up? I don't think that to myself. What I think oh. is, oh, boy, does that ever illustrate how challenging it is to, on the one hand, have really bizarre things happening in a world that's already bizarre and have the characters behave in human ways that you know, like, like really it does, it does kind of move a character into some uncharted territory by having them accept through the gate that anything weird that happens can be believed because then the, you know, because that, that gets in the way of things like conflict and things like, you know, disbelief. I know I saw some of the memes and whatnot, you know, in, in those early episodes where Boyd and, um, uh, Eon Bailey's character, um, Jim, Jim. where Boyd, where Jim is saying, oh, I think, I think I know what's going on here. I think I know what's happening. And Boyd's mm -hmm. like, I don't have time for this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have time for this shenanigans and goings on, Jim. I've got, you know, I've got things to tend to, like goats to find or whatever. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, it was like that was one of those moments where you're like, okay, you can't have you, you can't have everybody on the same page all the time. But on what right. basis are you gonna yeah, on what basis are you gonna have them not on the same page? That becomes I'm a challenge in this show. I swear, if there was a show that ever needed a communication intervention, it was this show with all the different people. <laughs> it's, tough. it's tough. It's hard. There was I mean, a lot I, I, going on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I found myself on more than a few. I mean, I've done some writing. I found myself on more than a few occasions going, boy, there's some tough, tough knots to unravel here. Like it's uh, this would be this would be tough to keep all these balls in play. And and given that, I thought I thought that they I thought they did a, a good job on a lot of on a lot of fronts, like it, 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 you know, given, given how much juggling there is to do, um, I thought, you know, I was pretty well entertained all the way through. I didn't, I didn't have a lot of moments where, you know, I was like, whatever. I, I really didn't. I was, I was right there with it all the way through. It's just an enjoyable, enjoyable mystery. Well, I drink the Kool-Aid. I buy it all. Sure. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Why not? I, mean, I could understand, um, Ellis being like, wait a minute. You were in a tree and then you were here because yeah, this place, you know, plays with the, the bounds of what we find normal, you know, and what we've found, you know, find in our everyday life. Like it, it does that, but it just seems like they're discovering things over, not over and over. Like they're discovering new things all the time, you know, like, 
God, I can't even think like just even the Phoebe Rex character. I think her name was Kelly being impaled to a tree. They hadn't seen that yet. Okay. Yeah. First off, that was fucked up. Oh, it's crazy, right? But that yeah. was just, that was so messed yeah. up compared to what we've seen before. Well, it was just, yeah. you know, it, what I really liked um, about the beginning of the season was being able to see it again through new people's eyes. Mm. And mm. It, uh, whereas the Matthews family arrive, they've got, um, you know, the accident of the RV to contend with and being stuck in the RV and, you know, like stuck at night and not understanding why they couldn't pull Ethan out and, you know, that they were playing with the sundown and stuff like that. And then um, Julie and Tabitha being up at Colony House, it just seemed like it went a lot easier when they showed up. But then when they were dealing with an entire busload of people that they had to contend with, I mean, it's a little bit easier, I think, to convince four people versus 25 people that are coming in 25 different directions. Like even the old couple that thought that they would be safe on the bus, mm. you know, just being there, but watching um, the monsters come up to the couple and shake their hands. And the couple, you know, is like, okay, you know, this is nice. The first nice new people, people that we've yeah. met um, that aren't crazy. And then, you know, we know that they get attacked right away. And we, you know, we watch the people in the diner as they're listening to this. And it's just, it's an interesting, um, it, it was interesting to watch that again. And just to, you know, look at it through our own eyes, thinking, all right, so what different thing is going to happen this time around? How are these people going to behave? And then you've got Randall, who is not buying one ounce of this, regardless of what he's hearing going on outside, regardless right. of what he sees the next morning when they're out there trying to rescue Jim. I mean, there's poor Tom ripped to shreds. And yep. it, it, it was just, I think it was a really strong opening for the show. Well, I love the fact how that, that first episode I mean, it, it wasn't it wasn't rocket science. Every time they tried to dig, the house kept collapsing. On it was like it was pulling, and um, mm. you, you know, yeah. I Lizzie and I kind of know what we're doing, and we're speaking with Bob Mann here, who um, was on the show first season, our first three episodes, I think. Um, yeah. And you know, I know you're a writer as well as an actor, but was there anything that surprised you in the season? that you were like, wow, that was really good. Or that was, you know, again, I'm just curious from your perspective as someone that's in the business, regardless that you were on the show, but like as someone that's in the business, did, was there a little plot twist, whether it was the music music box or the worms or whatever, was there anything in your eyes that you thought that? Um, oh yeah. Was in uh, there? I, I mean, all of that really like when you when you think about the i mean it, it's a show that doesn't spend it's a show that doesn't spend very much time uh laboring in what i guess would be the ordinary world of the show right so so there's a version of this show where the ordinary world is where the characters are before they come into it yeah. and and the inciting incident so you know the inciting incident for the um for 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 you know jim for the 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 family is coming into the town it is so we experience their story through there but for a whole bunch of the other characters the ordinary world is already being in the town right right and so the inciting incident have to be different kinds of things right it's it's the first death in 96 days or it's whatever right but then as you go you need you need more things to be happening that bring out conflicts and bring out um, stuff that happens. And really, like, you know, right from the get go, you have this business of Sarah having something communicating with her. But as it turns out, the the stakes just get raised higher and higher and higher as you go as as things like 
interdimensional travel or potentially traveling through time. I don't even know. It, we haven't even really had confirmed for us yet if that's even a thing. We're not 100% sure. But then you have this business of the worms and the cicadas and the, 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 the box, like pieces keep getting added that make the, that, that weave the thing into something increasingly more complex to the point where you're not even really sure what the threat is. You're yeah. not sure. Yeah. You're not sure if the threat is psychological. Is it like the monsters, the monsters, frankly, almost seem to be somewhat quaint at this point, the, mon yeah. the monsters, the mon at this point, the monster, if all they had to deal with was the monsters, it wouldn't even really be that big of a deal. They've already gone 96 days in a stretch. You know, they've had a bad run of luck uh, yeah, in the, the last, last couple of weeks, few weeks or whatever, the, whatever the time span of the show. And honestly, it's funny when you say maybe a week or two of second season, I don't think this first season covered that much time. No. I don't think we've actually, I don't think we've been in this world very long. So if you think about it, the, the monsters are just sort of the, the thin edge of the wedge, so to speak. There's a whole bunch of other things going on that, that are really just, I would, I would almost say there are a whole bunch of things that have just been introduced and we haven't even really, gotten into the meat of it yet and i know that that's to the frustration of some of the fans and i can i can certainly appreciate that but if if each season was a section of a novel you know we'd be yeah. I, I think we'd probably be maybe a third of the way in yeah and and and, and hope hopefully that means we're going to get we're going to get a lot more more play at, at so, this point with tv so, that's tough because you don't know how you don't you don't know you don't know how much you don't know how much roadway yeah. necessarily you have in, in, in front of you. So it's at tough. any point. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, after watching the finale and thinking about it for the last week, I'm starting to think that it's a game. Like the whole music box piece with the yeah. worms and, and everyone seeing the music box, not everybody, but a lot of people seeing the music box that weren't there to get the worms. And then Boyd finally defeating the music box and yeah. the Abby character, like she was Abby when she first showed up to him when he's about to smash that music box. But if you listened carefully, her voice changed and her vernacular changed while she was talking to him. The more he seemed intent on breaking that box, the more she was intent on getting him not to. And when he sure. broke the box, the game was over. They won that game, right? And then this round. Yeah. Then there's Tabitha, who somehow is getting this message that she needs to save the children. And maybe she was on an express route or something that you know, took her to the tower so that she could get pushed out and back into reality. But we don't know that she's in reality for sure. We don't know if she's just in another escape room at this point. We don't know. But right. I was just, I mean, I try not to get too heavy into the theories because they're so zigzaggy. It's hard to stay committed. You can't seem to, like, I'm a very linear person. I think it's because of teaching math. I'm not sure. But I'm a very linear person. And when something starts to, you know, go off in different tangents, and I'm not seeing a pattern to it, I don't know how to process that. So well, it goes back to what Jade said. You know, if you, it feels like you're in the middle of a book, and you don't know where they're starting and you need the two pieces to kind of connect. Well, that puzzle. Yeah. And I, I don't, that's why I, I just don't commit to any it of might, the theories. It, it might not be. I mean, I, I, you know, I do pop in and I, I take a look at what some of the fans um, say and some of the theories and look, the theorizing is fun. It's and very, we're going to show some fun. of it because some of the people yeah. in the chat are actually going to we're going to start talking about it, too. So sure. Yeah. And the theories are fun. I mean, one thing I do and I would not want to dissuade anyone from theorizing. Oh, no. Theorizing, not if theorizing is your is your bag. You know, go for it. Have a good time with it. Storytelling is not necessarily. Uh, look, a story is not the same thing as an escape room. Right. And an escape room can tell a story. And, and certainly anyone who's played RPG 
video games or these sort of things, there can be story elements and backgrounds to characters and things like that built into it. But a story is not necessarily a puzzle to be solved. A mystery isn't even necessarily a puzzle to be solved where you're looking for clues. I mean, it, it is interesting to me that there is that 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 there's so many comparisons drawn between this show and Lost. Um, I've watched Lost probably five or six times now. And that's that's not I'm not I'm not a rewatcher, but it's because mm -hmm. my kids have gotten into it and I've watched it kind of in tandem with them every time a new kid comes along and it. So, so it's a fun it's been a fun experience but one thing that has become very very clear to me watching lost a number of times is that if you watched lost as a puzzle to be solved it was unsolvable yeah it, it was really unsolvable was. there were no like there were if you sat down and you mapped out all of the clues that were given to you they there is a reveal at the end and in pieces near the end that tells you what things meant but they weren't necessarily things that you would have been able to come up with a solution to like like right. in, a, in a way the story was actively trying to come up with something more interesting than the theories that a, a viewer might have come up with based on which way they chose to be misdirected that's that's the magic of a really good story is not to present you a room that you can escape from, but to present you with a room you can't escape from and then have that moment where they say, here's how you could have got out and you go, wow, you know, just yeah. be amazed yeah. by it. Well, I, don't, I, I don't, I don't want to solve this show. I don't, I want to, I want to, I want to be amazed by whatever they come up with and they hope they do. I don't want to come up with a better theory than what I'm, I'm served up with in the end. To, I'm not to really your point, in you know, somebody was saying on one of the Facebook groups, Oh, this is a bad season, all this. And I'm like, ah! what do you want them to do? Go home and like show is over. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, are you <laughs> watching the same thing I am? But that said, we do have a this couple of the theories that thing. I want to I want to throw yeah. at you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so I'm, the, I'm there for the theories. I, I I think those are fun, and I think they are cool. Yeah. And there really yeah. is only one theory. I'm sorry. I know there's a lot of red herrings, but this yeah. is the only one I'm accepting. The poison tea from Mrs. Lowe. It's the best mm. theory of all. <laughs> that She's they're all on a all. mushroom. They're all on a mushroom trip. Yeah. I have they're actually solved trip. that. I just have to make the video for it. No, but, but solve that. It's not. Oh yeah, right. Solution videos. Yeah. 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 Do you okay. do those? Okay. Yeah. So Lizzie, why don't you uh, do the first one? All right. Um, let's see. I've got to get close so I can actually read. I don't know why I can't see today. As far as theories, this is from Emily C. Oh yeah. As far as theories, there were two. One, this is all an experiment where everyone is studied to see how far they can be pushed. And two, there are moles to make Fromville, um, to make in from, there are moles to make in Fromville to keep this experiment on track. I still right. like the Cromanockle, but what do you think about the whole, the whole mole theory, guys? I, 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 to me, it feels like, so, to me, it feels like, uh, the, to me, it feels like the mole theory comes from viewers being far too exposed, maybe, to stories where there are moles. Hmm. Let's put it. Let's put it this way: If instead of a show, we were watching a baseball game, and it was two teams playing against each other, and someone in the crowd stood up and said. I think there's a mole ah. on one of the other teams playing for the opposite team and they're actively trying to make their team lose. That's why this happened and that happened and this happened and that happened. You'd think that that person was out to lunch, right? Because we have no experience of moles in professional sports or games. Like there'd be no context whatsoever for that as a theory of why the New York Yankees are beating the Boston Red Sox. Uh, uh, don't even runs. ever wait, wait, say first that. Off, don't ever say that. That yeah. was the greatest example ever. And no. Bob, you are more than welcome to come back anytime. No. We can talk Yankees about the lunch. Suck. Yankees suck. 
Yeah. Anyway, but you see, yeah. but you see what I'm saying, it's right? Like fine. you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think anything of it, right? Like even though you have conflict, you have two two sides against each other, you have and this sort of thing. So like, I personally, and maybe I, maybe I'm maybe this is my bias, but I've seen absolutely nothing up to this point to suggest to me intuitively or otherwise, if I were to look more closely, that there is anyone here for the, whom the stakes of life or death are not real. The, it really does seem like the stakes of life or death are truly real for everyone. And I can't, and it's not, it's not just an evidence thing. It's also from a storytelling thing. Like what, what is the narrative import of having any of these characters be playing for the bad guys? Like if you name me a single character and try to tell me that they're a mole and you will immediately destroy that character's narrative. It will not make any sense. The only thing I, don't I, think was so. completely bent. I don't think so. I think Donna. And I it's think reaching Liz. No, it's not. I've heard the Donna. I've heard the Donna theory. I've heard the Donna is a mole theory. I'm sorry. I don't buy it. That character is so earnest. It's played. But and she, she plays is. it so straightforward. She totally is. She totally is. Yeah. I feel like, she is being compromised in some way. I don't think that she willingly showed up playing for the company. I don't think that that's the case at all. And part of what, part of the reason why I think that it, you know, Donna is, is because of the way she responded to Jim when he said, someone heard us. You heard it. Someone heard us. And the way she responded to him was as if she knew something more than what we think that she knows. The one and thing that, I will say, that's I'm sorry. The reason why that that's see, now, so why. now so now the the odds of that are so incredibly low, and I'll 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 tell you why, and it's a very boring and practical reason, right? Is so, this the Ernie Bob speaking? What's that? No, I mean, yeah, no, right. No, it's like it has more it has more to do with what like so. So if that were true, then it means that Liz Saunders, the actor, has to know and was directed to deliver that line, which is probably one of many takes, um, deliver that line that way with the right amount of nuance that a viewer is going to pick up on it. You do know that she's not an actual, the character is not an actual person. Like she's an actor who's playing the role and who has read the script up to the end of season two, who if Donna is a mole, Liz Saunders certainly doesn't know that she's a mole yet. Cause she hasn't, she, she would only have read the scripts up to the end of season now, two. I will which say means, this. Which, oh, hold on. Let me finish. Okay. Which means somebody has pulled her aside and said the following to her. They have said, you're a mole. And we need you to deliver your lines without anything in the plot or the episodes or the lines to suggest this one way or the other. We need you to deliver those lines with the right amount of nuance so that when it is turns out that you are a mole, we'll be able to look back and you'll be able to they'll be able to see and go, aha, the, that is like the depth of that sort of exercise is I'm telling you, it's just not the it's just not there. Wait, let me it's first say there. this. I do not think there's a mole. No, there's two I don't things think there about, is there's two things about Liz Saunders' character that I don't particularly care. She keeps her hands in her pocket, which I know maybe that's just what she does in real life. Like that's her thing. Or that's yeah. Donna's thing. But that's Donna's thing. But yeah. to rebut what you're going to say, Bob, they did it in one of the greatest reveals ever, Harry Potter. With Snape. Oh, uh, uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just yeah. saying, I'm not saying it's. Either, I don't think she's a mole. I think the whole mole theory is just grabbing for straws. I think Randall is bar none, without a doubt, batshit crazy because he's in this world and whatever yeah. else. I think Donna knows a lot of things. I think the way they shot it made it as though she was just at the right place at the right time. All right. I'm going into the notes. I was not going to go in here. But anyway. Um, but I don't know. Like with Snape, I mean, Snape's an interesting example though, Alex, because we don't have to go too deep into this. No. But like there, if you, this is what I meant when I said there is no narrative. I cannot see the narrative uh, benefit or, or the narrative import of there being a mole. Nothing to say. Okay. About. I mean, 
Snaping, Snape, Snape wasn't a mole. First of all, he just had conflicting allegiances, and, yeah. and he had like it, narratively, it works so elegantly and beautifully for his character, and it's a huge bit of misdirection. Um, with Donna, that wouldn't be misdirection. It would just be, it would really be reaching. Like it would be random. It would be unsolvable right. and random. If you've got to resort to the nuances in the way she delivers lines or the fact that she's got her hands in her pockets to deduce that she's a mole, I feel like you're looking for something that it really isn't there. Like that's my, I think those things are just choices. I don't think that they're informed by, I don't think they're informed by like a mystery. To, to me, that's right up there with, with, uh, to me, that's right up there with zoning in on little pieces of randomly placed set decoration. Uh, really, or, we've or never the, done that before at all. Right, or right, <laughs> or or the thing, or the things that background actors do uh, that that put them slightly out of sync or out of uh, continuity in different takes and stuff. All these different little things. It's fun. Again, I wouldn't dissuade someone from doing it. It's a fun bit of business. But uh, to me, that's not evidence. To me, to me, those are like really spurious uh almost unhinged little red herrings that don't actually to me the answer is going to be in the narrative the answer is going to be in the story the answer is going to be in what the, and snape snape's turn near the end of harry potter is embedded intrinsically within the story because it's already a story about allegiances about jockeying for power about you know having the strength to overcome uh, what is in front of you versus what you know is right, uh, being on the side of right instead of on the side of might. It has all of those things built into it, right? It, I, I, I would venture a guess to say that he's not even 100% clear through the whole story where he's going to land in the end because he's in self-preservation and trying to be the best version of himself he can be. That's not being a mole. That's trying to, that's trying to figure out who you are totally consistent with the thrust of that narrative whereas this like i don't I, I i'm just not seeing any of that i don't i don't maybe we don't know enough yet and i'm willing to go yeah. there but I, and all i have to yet. say is take that take that with your <laughs> no yeah. i'm sticking with it I all right give me your cool. evidence because counselor the yeah, thing is cool. it's the beginning of this i didn't yeah. start thinking about it until season two and it's just the beginning of these thoughts I'm not saying like if no, I know, I know. Mole, I'm just giving you a hard time. Her. Absolutely, I, yeah, for I mean, sure. I was thinking it was her and Randall, and I still kind of think Randall. Yeah, like he's a little unhinged. I think I think Randall is there, you know. And again, this is just me kind of watching the show. I think Randall is there to illustrate how a certain type of person in the world that we have not really seen much of in right. the show will behave and react when he gets there what what is a kind of right right of center leaning natural conspiracy theorist uh distrustful of authority what is that kind of person going to do what are they going to add to the soup when they show up in a place like this to, to like to me that's an interesting little bit uh, of of uh, thing that someone's going to add to a story that's going to drive some tension it's going to drive some conflict and it's going to force some other characters into situations that we haven't seen yet and hopefully move the plot along i think it was it's more not, of a fan you know, thing than it was an actual sure yeah, yeah it was yeah, i think it cool. was all created cool. by the fans i don't know i mean i'm i'm not 100 percent sure i Honestly, I started thinking about it on my own. It was just organic. Like See, it wasn't fan driven. And then all of a sudden I'm seeing other people post about it. And I don't go deep into posts. Like right. I can't help but see them and I read them. But given um, some particularly negative and nasty stuff, which one site in particular just devolved into, I sure. really step back from that because I am not about that kind of being, you know, like we're all here loving the show. Well, let's all love it. I don't. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, yeah. We're, not, we're not about that. But, but OK, yeah. my question about the whole mole theory is this. And and please, the people that are listening um, either on the podcast or tonight. Yeah. Give us your take the take the whole opinion. mole thing aside. OK, it is a yeah. mole. It's a whole experiment. How do yeah. you explain the friggin' monsters? Because when we had you on for your first interview, Bob, I think yeah. the words that you said to us were, I shit my pants almost when that monster <laughs> came through the door and almost scared the crap out of me. And it's I'm going to tell you scary. right now, yeah, I'm just saying, scary. you can't, you can't like, 
if if they're going to make a jump and say that they created that too, then that's a whole separate thing. But I just can't see that happening. That I think there's just other forces that are going on. Now, the mole thing could be part of it, yeah, but at the same time, I just think they're all just trying to survive. And maybe yeah, I mean, oh, my, of course. My question, my question about the mole, and again, we don't even spend a lot of time on it, but like my question would be if what do you need the mole for? To instigate, to control, possibly report back certain things, um, to um uh, influence certain things happening, you know, like if there is, if it is an experiment and they're looking for some kind of reaction or result that this person would go in and encourage that to happen or set it up to happen. Um, it, it honestly, like, I, I don't know, like whatever they would want a mole for. Well, okay, yeah. so that's whatever they would want a mole for is a is is a is a, a easy answer, you know, not not to be yeah. critical, but I guess like all, everything you said up to that point, um, to to go in there to instigate, to monitor, to report back, think about everything, think about the world that they're living in. So the mm -hmm. people in charge, if there is someone in charge, if this isn't just magic, if it isn't if it isn't like sort of extra dimensional magic. Um, you know, sort of time space cul-de-sac or whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, and again, I don't know what it is. Uh, y you're basically saying that, okay, you've got a world where when they go into it, they can't come out of it. They're locked in. There are monsters that come out at night. There's magical stuff that happens. There's weird trees. Uh, they can clearly kind of track them and monitor them and they know what's going on. They're communicating with them through various means. They're communicating with them telepathically. Someone is communicating to Sarah, to Boyd when he gets the worms under his arms. You got all this crazy shit happening, right? All this weird, wild, crazy, magical shit happening. Again, what do you need a mole for? A mole almost feels like a really quaint unnecessary if it is an experiment and they're watching them and they've got all this nutty shit going on and there's all kinds of magic and stuff going on what do you need a spy for like what do you like you sending like encyclopedia brown in there to take notes like what, <laughs> what why what because is the you, what is the import because, what is, like it would be important to have someone in there as like I mean, it doesn't make sense that she's just as scared as everybody else. She's not play, play it, play it through, not like safe. play this, play the scenario through. Let's imagine Donna goes back to whoever it is she goes back to and okay. she reports. What is she telling them? She's like, ah, they're starting to suspect stuff. Yeah, no shit. Um, she's <laughs> she's like, <laughs> right. She's. Uh -oh. oh no, Bob froze. He froze. <laughs> no, he froze. He's probably still talking. Now I'm back. No, oh, no, he's no, back. back. He had to have a drink. It. I can, I can see it when I freeze. But anyway, you see what I'm saying, right? Like, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Like you I need mean, to, I... you need to, you can't, you can't stop at theory. You have to take that theory and then you have to apply it in a meaningful, practical way and say, how is that playing out? Like, what do we? In a way, that's part. That has to be part of the analysis, right? Hey, hey, Bob. I think. I think Donna's a mole because of what she does with her hands and the way she said certain things. But wait a minute. Like you have to kind of go, what is it that she's, what's the role that she's playing? What's the pl practical purpose? I don't see it. Like I, I it, if there's a mole, it renders a whole bunch of other I stuff. I think the mole decided to much. like cut your little thing off and, and you were messing with the mole right. too much. <laughs> and he cut your... Although I will say, so here's, here's something though, Liz, that I, I, that I do like, and I've been thinking about this a lot. So okay. I, um, a friend and I had occasion to play uh, a game um, a, a last year and the bit of the year before we got super into it and it's called Don't Starve. And there may be, there may be some fans or viewers who play games that are familiar with Don't Starve, but I'm not saying that there are a bunch of elements of this show that are similar to that, but the fact that there are so many elements of the show that are similar-ish to a uh, crafting, surviving kind of metaphysical, kind of magical, kind of monsterish uh, game where you have to work together and cooperate and get food and you have to 
take shelter at nighttime because monsters come out of the darkness and try to put out your fire and kill you. And, and your sanity meter is affected, your health meter, all these sort of things. I won't get into the details of it because it's kind of geeky, but the show has reminded me more of that than anything else that I've seen where, where uh, to me, to me, the theory that maybe they're involved in some kind of game ha to me, that to me, there's, there might be some foundation of that. I, I, and again, I don't, I can't really go any further than that. Cause I, I agree. I still think, I still think we're in the beginnings ish yeah. of the story. We haven't been given enough meat to chew on yet, but Absolutely. I'm seeing things that made me go, Oh, if this is a real life version of a bunch of, uh, players being dropped into a game and being expected to play and survive, which we wouldn't question if we just turned on a video game and started playing. Right. You wouldn't see it. You wouldn't see it as a horror scenario, but if it was happening in real life, it absolutely would be a horror scenario. And this yeah. business that you're locked in it, I there's, there's elements of that that I'm seeing in some of the theories that I'm like, yeah, I, I, I I'm seeing it. I'm seeing yeah. pieces of that. I'm, I'm buying, I'm buying that. Yeah. Okay. I have so, another. Oh, I'm sorry, Liz. You wanted to. I go. was just gonna say. So in this "Don't Starve" game, there's no kind of ref or anything like that. Any kind of moderator. It, you're just players. That's the thing. That's the thing. No overlord. You, th this is the thing. This takes me back to the mole, and then we'll move on from it. Um, <laughs> you don't need a mole when there's no overlord. Okay. There is no. There is no bad guy watching over the game, monitoring things. There's just players, and the game has been created and set for them and off they go. And new players show up sometimes as you see in online, massive world kind of games and stuff and yeah. people die and, and they're gone from the game. Like maybe it is, maybe it is like a real world version of something like that. And the, the consequences, like maybe, maybe my character and my, my, my character's wife and his daughter are out there like alive somewhere. Like maybe that is what happens when you die. In yeah. the game, you're 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 back to your you're back to your old life or something. We don't know yet. Again, we haven't yeah. been given enough information. They'd just be wild random theories at this point. We we really don't know. But there are a number of things like landmarks and go in in the game Don't Starve, you can go through these portals and pop up in different places in the world that you open up, but it has limits. You yeah. can't get out of it. You can't get out of it. You're stuck, you're stuck inside yeah. of it. There's so many pieces that I think, okay, yeah, that, that might, that's a close comparator. I hope it's more interesting than that, frankly. Right. Yeah. I hope it's wackier and more surprising. Now, I, I want to be surprised by a story. I don't want to solve it. I want to be surprised by it. I, I, I feel yeah. the exact same way. Like, I don't want to know everything, which is one reason why I don't spend a lot of time with the theories that people come up with. You know, I might just read one and it is in one eye, out the other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but um oh i just had a thought i wanted to say something but you know oh this was what it was what if all of these people signed some kind of permission saying that without <laughs> realizing what they were signing right without realizing like a waiver what they were saying they signed a waiver saying that they could die or whatever, like you bought a car and, you know, little uh, fine print, this car could cause death or whatever, you know, and they signed it somehow, like m maybe not even something that's in common, like going into the hospital, the same hospital or having the same procedure or whatever. Like it's not anything in common that they have with each other other than they signed this waiver saying that they knew they possibly could be killed. And that was that. I don't right. know. I just thought of that while you well, were talking. One, one person said, uh, this is the MGM version of Squid, Ga Squid Game, if that's what you're trying to get at. Um, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, or, 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 that, or, that, or that the game, imagine how differently you would play a video game if you, you while you were playing it, Right. You thought you could actually die. Forget it. You wouldn't take any chances. Yeah. You'd be, yeah. You'd be super. You'd actually play. You'd be playing for real. You wouldn't be playing a game. You'd be playing for real. Whereas, yeah. you know, so maybe maybe it's not that they signed something saying that they wouldn't know that they could actually die. Maybe they can't actually die, but they actually believe that they could while they're. Playing. Yeah. OK. Yeah. That would be, of, that'd be interesting. That's interesting yeah. to me. Speaking compelling. of dying, um, we did have another question, and I'm really yeah. sad because one of the king of conspiracy theories is one of our listeners the chromonocle 
And oh, yeah, yeah. this person, I think, daily has a new theory. Yeah, I mean, he, this Goes this deep. out there from the dates to the broken glass, which I do want to talk about because yeah. it, it's interesting. But yeah, I'm not uh, I'm not familiar with the Kramanog. Again, I don't I, I I go in and peek every now and again just to see some of the funny things. But Johnny people, Utah from say. from the beach, you got to love that picture of uh, yeah. Jake, I mean of Michael. Um, Tabitha cool. being in the real world. Um, first off, do you think Tabitha is in the real world? Both of you. Go, go ahead, Liz. I'm curious. I don't what you think. think so. I don't think so because when she looked out the window, the um, landscape looked like a postcard. It didn't look real. She might have been in the medical tent for all we know for the game. Yeah. See it. See, I don't. I see. It. Okay. So that's so that's so that's interesting. I I I don't. So this is just me personally. And again, um, I may be wrong. It could be, it could be, that the makers of the show are designing every frame, and every set, and every thing every character does, with a view to adding to the complex labyrinthian mystery. That is, where are we and what are we doing? Having yeah. been having been involved in a number of shows, including this one, I have a feeling that that's not how it is. What, that she's back in the real world? Oh, no! Oh. It's okay, I'm back. It's okay. He's I'm back. back. It only back. happens. It only happens for a second. It's just to get me to slow down. Um, I... I <laughs> I think I don't think the answer lies in the in the um, in the what's in the window. I don't think the answer lies in what you can see when you freeze frame on the screen. Yeah. I yeah, don't think it the looks answer like a lies. different person. It looks like a different it's not, person. Not it, but it's like to me that's just like look. It's just post production. It's just trying to make the thing look real. It's the scene. The scene. Yeah. The answer lies in the scene. What is it that happens in the scene, in the story, in the plot? The answer mm -hmm. is in the narrative. And I don't think we've been given anything. Right. We have not been given anything. Right. Like the answer is that she's either in the real world or she's not. If she's in the real world, the story takes a fundamental turn. It takes a fundamental turn. This happened at the end of season two of Lost. At the yeah. end of season two of Lost, in the final episode, and my apologies to anyone who hasn't seen that show, you've no excuse at this point. At this um, point, the, yeah. The, 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 in the final scene of the second season of Lost, there is a reveal of a character, and it's the first time you see a character who is not on the island, but experiences something contemporaneous to something that has happened on the island. It's not a flashback to the characters' lives before they got to the island. It's in real time. And that was the first time that you saw that there was an outside world existing at the same time as the island. That's a key fundamental shift that immediately laid waste to a whole bunch of fan theories, theories that they were dead, that they were... Like, it immediately kind of shut so many things down because it's like, oh, they are somewhere in the world and somebody somewhere else in the world experiences something because of what happened on the island. It's an immediate reveal that sh closes off a bunch of doors. Well, I don't think this scene with Tabitha, based on what we've seen already, does any of that work. I, I will say, I, thank I you really for, don't think we know. Thank yeah. you for crushing my lost dreams, and I'm not going to go out and see it. I, if I haven't have seen it by now, I'm not going um, yeah, to. That's right. That's it, right. It, it's okay. Right. I, I, yeah. but, but, but my point being is, um, anybody have potato vodka? Yes, that's a good one. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, they changed the still. I hear. I hear the new the new guy doing the still is a lot. I gotta I go to read. You. I go to read directly for the old stuff. I'm telling yeah. you, uh, he's, got, he's got a bunch of bottles of it under his bed, and I just go straight to him. We drank a bunch of it while we were doing King and Pawn. We actually, for we real? actually, I don't know if you saw this. We we had there was somebody in the fan group, and I didn't. I, I think I saw it, and I sent him a screenshot of it. Um, there was some. There's like a youth pastor for the church that we were shooting King of Pawn in the basement of. And right. he's, he, he caught wind that we were there and he posted something saying, hey, Tom and Frank are currently in the basement of the church that I work at shooting a show. And and Reed and I were kind of like, oh, gee, are we going to have a bunch of people show up? You know, they yeah. did. we're just we're just minor side characters. Nobody's showing up to see I us. I would have showed up. Yeah. Oh, I'm, waiting, I'm waiting for my 
we're waiting for our um our guest pass to be on the show. That's oh, yeah, what we yeah, want. Yeah. Like yeah, we fly, yeah, yeah. I fly sure. up. I got a couple of days. I can, yeah. I can, you know, I, I don't have to work work for rate. I can work for vodka. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> There's lots of that. We got lots of that. Um, yeah. No, but there was a theory, and again, um, there was one that was a time travel theory, which I I don't really want to get into because they really didn't talk about those dates in the first. They talked about a bunch of dates in the first season, and they really haven't gone back to that yet. Um, what they mentioned it. It was mentioned. Mm. Um, those dates were mentioned this season, though. But it wasn't like it was a big. It wasn't a big thing, but like they were mentioned. But the glass, the glass theory is kind of interesting, and I'm going to explain why. So yeah, in, I'm not familiar in, with that. Tell me. Okay, that. so Sarah breaks glass at the diner, cleans it up. There was like three incidences of like glass. And then the last incident was when Jade was trying to fit those two. Remember when he was talking to Reed, actually, Tom, the bartender, when he was trying to yeah. do an experiment. And yeah. basically the whole theory is what Jade said was trying to figure out how these pieces of glass come together. Now, yeah. rewind to when Nathan is talking to Sarah. They have a conversation, and the only reason I remember this is because I went back and I'm doing a little bit of my own rewatch. And she's like, "Sure." She actually talks about this theory of trying to put the pieces back together. Now I don't know how that all fits, but it it, it does make it kind of like maybe it's something to think about in season three when we get there. Now my question for you guys is this, because I don't know, and also the listeners. And the people listen on the podcast. Do you think Sarah's role is finished or does she have more secrets to provide saying this? She's not a mole, but she could have a connection to the bigger entity somehow. She does though. I'm saying, I think, you know, I wondered if, um, once she didn't actively have the worms, like it was out in the open, that she would not be of any use. Um, but then when they go looking for the music box, she can hear it. No one else can hear it, but she can hear it. And she tells Boyd what he has to do. Right. So she's still connected somehow. Mm -hmm. Again, I, I, I agree with that. I think, I mean, the, the, so much of this is like narratively driven for me, right? Like I think, I think, I think, I think picking up on stuff like that is, is very much on the money. Like to me, that's that to me, that kind of stuff, like, okay, a couple of characters had a conversation. Then you have a character go through this sort of like journey where they, they, they go from like, think about what Sarah has gone through up to this point. Right. Um, there's no way she's done because her arc isn't finished. She yeah. goes from being an instrument of this place, whatever, what, to whatever, whatever that means. And it, I don't think it has to be purposive. I think, I think it could very well be just like, here's what this place does to some people um, of a certain type. And, and, you know, Victor, I think maybe is a, is another example of a character who's, 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 there's some connections. There's like a tether between him and the place themselves. Cause yeah, how, did he how did he survive? How did he survive? survive? All these different things. So, like, I, I, I feel like, I mean, have we seen Sarah and Victor together at any point? I don't. Have they even so. had a? Have they had a conversation? Have they I don't think so. That's so talk? interesting. Like, there have been a number of characters that I don't think they've shared any narrative time together. Right. Like, they have not moved the plot together. And it would, to me, it would be yeah. interesting to see, like, and this maybe is where the glass comes into it right um is that maybe the puzzle that needs to be put together is all the different people who have been affected by this place all coming together and sharing their th and we got a teaser of that at the tail end of this season when you have these characters coming together sharing their experiences finally and then all, all you needed to have was one person in the room that goes oh yeah i've heard of that before i'm familiar with that here's what that that is and yeah. then suddenly suddenly you have a a, a a lowercase s solution 
to something and somebody figures it out and they figure out what to do. I feel like there's a larger version of that that is yet to happen where characters like Victor and Sarah and, you know, people like that come together and go, let's share, let's compare notes and let's talk about what's going on here. Maybe that's the answer to us getting out of here. And that, that would be a very elegant um, theme or, you know, sort of thesis of the show, which is to say that here we are all trapped in this mess together. We're all at odds with each other. We're, we, we can be quite disparate in the way we go about our business. We can be isolated from each other. We're very affected by our traumas and by our grief and by our pain. But guess what? We all have a piece of a larger mosaic that if we come together and we share it with each other, we will be able to come up with a solution, whatever that is, whatever that means, right? And in this show, the solution is the metaphor of them being able to get out of this, this, this drain, right? This eddy in the middle of a in the middle of a lake. That's that's what it is. To me, okay, to me, that's narratively elegant and makes sense from a story perspective. To me, that's so much more satisfying than an escape room that you find the key and you put it right. over here and you get the bottle and you get, the, yeah, that's cool. Great. Good for you. You made it out of the room, but like, it doesn't, it doesn't tell a story that moves me in a, in a meaningful way, which is why I, I don't take a lot of umbrage with people necessarily who speak up and say, I'm not buying the characters. I'm not buying the writing. I'm not buying the, I may not agree with them, but if that's the yeah. issue I'm taking with the show, that's fair game. To me, that's fair game. If somebody's not moved by what's happening, if someone's not, I, you know, again, I would say, well, wait till it's over. And then, and then we'll have a conversation about whether you were. I, I, to that point, you know, a lot of people, you know, uh, when we grew up, we had 20 episode shows. It, or exactly. More. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and people are saying that, well, with only 10 episodes, everyone should be jam packed. Well, you know what? You also have to set tables. You have yeah. to set the table for the good stuff. And, and, you know, we we when we were we've watched The Walking Dead. I mean, we've watched every episode of The Walking Dead. And I think that, you know, every episode wasn't the greatest episode. There were some stinkers in there. And I don't think there was a stinker in here. I'm just saying, but you gotta move the plot. And some of it isn't exactly the way we want it to be moved, but you gotta you gotta move the plot. And I and I think that with an ensemble cast like this, we got so many moving parts. Yeah, it's yeah. not always going to be great. I, I, I get the not every episode is going to be, you know, mind blowing and exciting, but I don't think that there is any screen time wasted. I feel like to your point, you know, they set the table and you just have to um, make note of what they're trying to say there. You know, and I always and I'll continue to go back to what I thought was a throwaway scene of Tabitha seeing Marielle in the cabinet. And, you know, you didn't know what that meant until the week after. But they are imparting information with every scene, whether you pick up on it or not. There's information there all right. the time. Absolutely. I don't, in well, a, we, we, I would say, I would, so the only issue I would take with that, I guess. And this intermission is um, brought to you brought by, to this Canada. intermission is brought to you by Canada, uh, yeah. very far away from where we are. Um, the only issue I guess I would take with, with that to a certain extent, Liz, is that just as we don't know if it's not working because we haven't seen the whole story yet. We also don't know if it's working. Right. We don't know either way. Like to, to me, I, to me, some of the criticism, it's, to me, some of the praise falls as flat as the criticisms in that sense, where when someone is saying, no, 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 guys, they're going somewhere. No, no, no. This all means something. No, no, no. This is all coming together. Anyone who's saying that is saying it on faith. Yeah, oh, I'm totally full it's of just it. faith. Like we like you're a writer, Liz. You've written stories. You've written books, right? Like, have yeah. you written novels? Have you written full length full length novels? I, I know you've done yeah. anthologies. Right behind like her that. shoulder are a right couple of volumes shoulder. of them. Yeah, other right. you done, are, you've done. I'm have you done on book five? Okay, but have you done multi? Uh, do your books have multiple chapters of the same story? I'm just trying to track if they're just like yeah, anthologies yeah, yeah. of short stories. Okay. Yeah. No. It's yeah. a continuous story. Yeah. Surely stories. someone. Surely someone reading one chapter. 
-hmm. of your book and you asking them, what do you think of my story? What do you think? Like they're the answers they can give you both positive and negative. Yeah. Have a, have a, a whole big world of blind spot around them. They don't know what it means. They don't know where it's going. They don't know whether it leads to something, whether it doesn't lead to something. They might have faith. They might be doubtful. They might be critical of things that you go, oh. <laughs> I think we should freeze frame all of his, his emotions. <laughs> it's better than ever. He's had all the emotions so <laughs> Yeah, far. that's right. Like, Whenever I get good. But yeah, but you do you do know what I mean, though, Liz. Yeah, right? Yeah, like no, it's, it, I like, totally to me, know what you yeah. mean. Yeah, and yeah, the yeah. thing is, is um, is I think the question that comes after that is, are you still on the ride? Or are you getting off? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's I think that's the important question. Like I have faith. I really do have faith that they are not going to lead me astray. Like they're right. not going to leave me hanging out in the middle of the ocean on a raft with no way to get back in. Yep. I yeah. really have faith that this time it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, but I, 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 at the same time, I, I mean, I, I do too, but at the same time, I, I'm very mindful. And again, I'm sort I'm sort of agnostic about it, frankly, but I, I, yeah. I, with any given audience, with every given story, it is my understanding that the story needs to do the work and that if you stay with it, it is an act of faith. And if you yeah. don't stay with it, it is, it is because it has stopped moving you it's because right. it has stopped getting you to a place where you're even interested anymore and no matter how great a, a story is any story can lose somebody Absolutely. i don't know if you've i don't know if you've if you've ever stopped reading a book or if you've ever read oh. a couple of chapters have you yeah. watched yeah. have you watched the walking dead the negan years uh, I, well, no. you, it, I i yeah. gave up i'm done yeah I'm there done. you go I'm and fine. a lot of people did a lot of a lot of people did a lot of audience dropped off at that point me yeah. included and yeah. it's like okay this story went to a place that I, that got me somewhere emotionally and now i feel like there's nothing really left for me yeah that's exactly it like i i got a text while we're doing this asking if i'm watching dead city right right and i was yeah. like they they made all this headway at the end of season 11 Maggie and Negan and then they go back as if they never had that conversation I it was I love the show cool. but that's all another conversation yeah. so sure, I, sure. but you sure. love things about it that I will never love exactly I do want to ask you and the viewers and I and it's not really a theory but what was the purpose of killing Smiley off when they made such a big deal about promoting the crap out of this guy. And do you think he'll be back? Um, I mean, I, I, I have this sort of cynical, Hey, this is a show that they want people to watch kind of answer. And I don't, I mean, he's a, he, a visually, visually he's, he's striking. He's visually, great. visually yeah. he's set apart, right? But yeah. let me be, let me be. I'm, I'm going to say something that I am sure a whole bunch of viewers and fans of the show are not going to like. I'm sure they're not going to like it. He is not a character. Yeah, he's not. He is not Ooh. a character. And I know, I you yeah. can, you know, he's a character in the way that the aliens, uh, in the aliens movies. Uh, like the 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 Ripley and and uh, Ridley and and uh, Ridley Scott and James Cameron movies, how those are aliens, how those are characters. They're not characters. They're they're yeah. they're something that exists for the purpose of testing the characters and pushing their boundaries and seeing what they will they will do and making something very compelling in a scary sort of way for the audience. They're not meant to be. They're not but, meant to be characters. But, I mean, Bob, it's I'm sorry, like no. it's like the Terminator is a character. But Smiley just isn't. They eventually made yeah. him a character, but in the first Terminator movie, I would say he wasn't a character. Really? Not I, really. Like, I mean, I, I don't know. We can have we can have debates and disagreements <laughs> over what it means to I, be I a just, character. I'm, I'm 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 all I'm all there for that. But I guess I again I'm thinking from the purpose of like what is the story you're trying to tell and who is it you're telling a story about, right? Yeah. If it comes to pass that that part of this story is about the monsters, 
that there's a whole backstory and a whole interesting bit. Again, I'm a hundred percent there for that. I think that will be cool. Yeah. And I think there's some interesting things, hopefully to be revealed about what these creatures are and where they came from. If the show doesn't tell us that I'll be deeply disappointed. I hope we do yeah. learn right. something about these things and where they came from. I, I, I really, really do. But again, up to this point, there's been sparingly little revealed to the yeah. audience about what the the intentions or the desires of these things are other than to be menacing and to hunt. Well, yeah. that's that's pretty much what they do. And yeah, I, I agree with you, though. You get these little twists like, oh, look at what they did to, you know, again, Phoebe Rex's character. Like they clearly yeah. have a playful sort of element about them. OK, add that to the list of things we know about these creatures. Right. That still just makes them creatures. Like right. it still just makes them, there are, there are animals who, there are, there are predatory animals who play like yeah. who, who mess or like cats play with mice. Oh my gosh, like, yeah. They're not, that doesn't, that doesn't make them characters. It just, it's just an element of their predatory but, but, nature. But right? Bob, to your, to your point, um, first off, I do want to mention this comment, you know, uh, betrayed King. We don't like smiley. He, he was responsible of Donna's death. Um, no, but <laughs> But even within that monster theory that you're saying, you know, I and I can't think of like perfect examples of it, but there's always that gray back or there's that spotted whatever, that extra spotted wolf. Yes, they're monsters. I think when they put you on the poster and they and they put you out front the way he did. I mean, I hope he can come back just because he seemed like he was kind of the head of the monsters. And I know maybe I'm a little bit more, I'm drinking the the smiley juice more than others, but you know, I, I just think it was a, it was a bad move. You're, you're, so you're experiencing the story and not just the story, but the experience of the show, you're experiencing the show, not in the order that the show was assembled. So the okay. show was made last summer. So they did not kill Smiley after putting him on the poster. They created a season of the show. They wrote it and they mapped it out. And then they, they came up with a shooting schedule and they filmed it. And then after it was done, they started assembling marketing material for the show to market it and to get people to watch it and smiley who was you know again that's something that fans of kai i, you I know, think we, we were the we, ones that coined it yeah like we, we you know that that gets assembled and and there's a decision made you know let, let's let's put it this way um i'm not a hundred percent convinced or sure that when i was filming my stuff in season one and they were doing all that stuff with me in the box that the plan was to have the very first trailer of the show be me in the box. You know, maybe it was, yeah, but yeah. that's how it played out. Like, you, I don't think you always know. I think sometimes you do, but I yeah. don't think you always know necessarily how you're going to be presenting a, a creative piece of work that you've made from a marketing perspective until after you've made it, until after you've put it together and you go, oh, this is pretty arresting. This will be cool. Again, I'm, I'm open to being wrong, but then maybe they knew all along that See, they were going to do it this way. But, you, you know, you're making a really good point. And I hate the fact that you're making such a legitimately awesome. I'm ruining. Well the fun. You, but I hate it. You fun. are ruining my I fun. I know. No. I'm very sorry. <laughs> I, I will say, though, I mean, even cutting it the way they did, like editing it, I mean, they they made them a focal point this year. Yeah, and, for sure. And yeah. I just think it's a shame because I think he could have been a really good adversary. They obviously, and I know Lizzie and I have talked about it, they put a ton more money into this show this year. I mean, it's clear that they put more well, money. Well, as far, as, far as marketing it, they did. And also, like, there, there was, was more monsters. Show. There's more. There was more a lot of stuff. FX. But you know, one of the interesting things, and I, I I wanted to ask the both of you what you thought, like when Victor and Tabitha are down in the, the caves mm -hmm. and they come upon these monsters, they're not just coming upon these sleeping monsters, they're coming upon all these objects. And right. it made me start to think about why those things, what do those things have to do with, you know, the, the monsters that are sleeping, you know, like the dummy, the chest, the, the television, the toys, um, all of that stuff. Like even the bride's suitcase was there. Mm -hmm. 
So what are your thoughts on that? Oh, it's clear. I mean, it's clearly giving information. I mean, I, I, I've seen a number of things I feel like on the show that for me reinforces that there is no plan to that. Like, and by plan, I mean, like, I feel like a lot of the theories fall down because they presuppose that there's a puppet master. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Even the mole thing. Right. The, yeah. The, the, who's the mole? Is there a mole? Who could the mole be? Why the mole? All of that is predicated on a on a foundation on an assumption that there's someone to report back to that there is that there is someone on the other side of an invisible wall who's playing who's doing something right it's, like it's, like to yeah. me to me to me I've seen more evidence on the show than I can feel like I can shake a stick at that they're stuck in the middle of something like not unlike I mean if you get lost in the woods if you get lost in the woods and there are bears and there's mosquitoes and you can't find spiders. any food and you can't, there's spiders and there's stuff you can break your ankle on and all kinds of shit like that. You don't need someone hiding behind the trees, watching you actively trying to make sure that you don't get out of the woods. Nope. You don't need okay. it. You already yep. have all of the elements you need existing in the natural world in right. this case, a very unnatural world, but uh, hey, there's lots of natural stuff that happens that seems otherworldly. Like to me, I, I have not seen anything that necessarily says to me that there is something like that with one exception, like with one with one single exception. And that's the the voice, the voice on the radio. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's that's the only th to me, that's the only thing that sits as a like a weird kind of outlier where I'm like. Who was that that was talking yeah. to them? Like, what, um, like what, what is that all about? One of the things, and we're talking, about, we're talking to Bob Mann, who, um, and we're trying to recap season one, season two, and possibly season three. Now, we already know what happens. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, I did want to, I'm looking at the chat, and before, because I want to talk a little bit about Victor, because people are going crazy about that. Yeah, but before yeah, yeah. we do that, Lizzie, what was your thought of the whole Akui kids? And where do you think that they all kind of fit in your mind? Because that was some of the worst closed captioning. I think people are going ballistic for like two weeks. Is, oh, that, like, what it is, is that really the spelling? You know, or what is the whole deal with these kids? I mean, I really we... don't know. Like, I really, really yeah, don't know because. Jade has now seen them first. Tabitha saw them. Jade has now seen them. And I'm pretty sure Victor saw them in the in the cave too, like when they were poking out between those. Um, I'm not cars. sure. I'm not sure if he did or not. But I, that's it's here nor there. I mean, they yeah, got jails. They got they got beds of rock rock beds and yeah. yeah. I, I just yeah. I don't know. Like I really, I really really don't know. Like they look like ghosts in a sense because of their coloring. Um, and what we think about ghosts a lot of times. Um, but I don't know. I couldn't really get anywhere with that. I yeah, just... it's pretty it's pretty left field. Like it really does. Although again, though the way for me that makes it fit like Are you gonna you... say that they're moles? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I think the kids are the moles. Yes, the kid the and the kid the kids. And that's what... Those kids. Yeah. When Jade stumbles upon them, they are pretending to sleep. Not unlike a kid pretending to sleep yeah. on Christmas Eve. Yeah. When they, they know they're there. trying to stay up to see oh, Santa like, Claus. Yeah. They, I mean, I, again, like I, I, I feel like when you've got all these elements, like if you play one of these RPG games, you know, in these kind of survival games, like don't starve, there is a, uh, you know, if there's a. He's starving. Yes. A little, little bit of a pause for for um he's Bob. drinking over there, so I'm gonna drink. It's so it's so fun because you guys see this freezes before I do. It's so so you uh, I'll see you react. You should almost have like a, a <laughs> escape uh, like a word that you say. As soon as I freeze, just say it and I'll stop. On Kui. But, but on yeah, Kui. yeah, let it be on Kui. But what I was gonna say was I, I I feel you know, when I see those things, it's like they may not be connected, like there may just be a rogues list of things that exist in this world yeah and it's a and as characters encounter them they they get they get different pieces of the puzzle you know the puzzle to be solved is how do we get out of this 
out of this game. You know, again, I hope I'm wrong, but it, it does seem like it does seem like that kind of thing. Even even the reveal of Jade looking up and yeah. you realize that the symbol is the is is the are the roots superimposed against the sky. That was cool. Yeah, and to was. me that to me that was very reminiscent of the kind of thing that you would discover at a certain point in a game. You know, you yeah. see these references and then you discover or like in Lost the numbers. You know, like they have yeah. you know there's it's it's almost similar to that where some something that it takes on a significance for certain characters does get revealed to be yeah. something, but it might not be as it may not be as big of a of a connection that ties everything in as you thought it was going to be. It's just and, like, and oh, yeah. One of the lists, are what Lisa said in the chat, and, and she's right. Somebody said that it might be a different language. It might be translatable. There's a whole yeah, bunch yeah, of different yeah. things, and, and it might not be the right way we're saying it. And of course- Well, there, you mean spelled. It's not spelled. Right. We don't know how it's really supposed to be spelled. Has everyone seen- uh... On Koei? On Kui. On Kui. It means come back. It okay, come good. Back. Did you hear my question? Did I no. did it freeze before my question? Yeah, no, Has, no, have, we, have, have, we have you both it. seen have you both seen Game of Thrones? Yeah. Oh yeah. Have you watched oh yeah, all of, of course, Game of, of course. Oh have you my seen God, all of Game I of Thrones? Yeah. What's the what's what could be the equivalent? I like oh. I do this with my kids. I ask them questions about stories and see if they get it. What's it's very conde it's very condescending and annoying. Yeah, and I, I admit coming. that right. Hodor. Oh yeah. Hodor. 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 Yeah. yeah. Hodor. Right. Which, like incidentally, his, that, his gonna... name. His name. His name wasn't even a mystery. But what a cool reveal when you found yeah. out where his name come from came oh, from. Yeah. Right. Like Hodor. it could. It could be something like that where the thing you're yeah. hearing isn't actually the thing. Like it's. It's. It's yeah. something. It's something else that is not something that we could. Like what were the clues that told you that Hodor's name was hold the door. What were the clues? I'm going to suggest zero. There were zero clues. There were yeah. zero things revealed. Yeah. You didn't to, know. To until... You could not have solved. It was just no. a, it was just a, it, it was just a rewarding reveal when you go, Oh, cool. That's it. There yeah. It is. Yeah. That was it's it. Oh, cool. Moment. Uh, it's not, it's not something that broken. can be solved. Yeah. It, it's, it's, my heart it's just broke for him. Storytelling. It's a magic of storytelling. Yeah. That's all it is. I'm, I'm willing. I'm hoping that it will be something really cool that nobody can possibly solve. That it's just it's just going to be a neat, a neat kind of reveal about something. Again, I'm hoping all of these theories are wrong. I'm 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 hoping that it's something so much cooler um, that that they've got cooked up here that we we can't possibly think of it. All right, another character that I do want to kind of point out because Lizzie had her pulse on on her in the beginning. Do you think Tilly is more than just a little old nosy lady, or do you think she's more to the story? Because I just think she I know I know so many Tillys in my life. That there's yeah. just it, it's everybody's like going crazy about her. Oh, she she thinks she figured out that the that um Fatima was pregnant. I a woman knows and all this other stuff. And then she brings up also the whole 47 theory where she had four four kids, seven grandkids and 47 was on the radio. So there's a yeah. bunch of there's there's those two theories between Tilly right. and 47. Um what are you guys thoughts about Tilly first off? Uh I mean she's kind of she acts like a busybody. She is. And and that bugs me. Um but she's like a door opener. A lot of times she comes up and gives you a piece of information and it's a very short exchange. And then she's on her way. Mm. It, like she seems very busybody, you know, like so-and-so is here. This one's doing that, blah, blah, blah. Um, the whole thing with Fatima, I was like, I'm a woman. I don't know. I mean, I know if, if someone's like, oh, well, I'm late. Well, you know, you could be pregnant. But looking at someone, you can't just look at someone and, and know automatically that they're they're pregnant. Like, she doesn't know Fatima. Well, that's... So in my world, what I would say is that that's inductive reasoning, not deductive reasoning. Yeah. So yeah. that's... Instead of saying, what is my evidence? What What is my evidence that this woman can't 
can't look at a young woman and go, I've seen these signs before, I believe you're pregnant. What is the evidence that we've been provided that she can actually do that? I would suggest none. Yeah. There's no, there's no evidence whatsoever. The character says it and she's right. Yeah. She's right. Yeah. And, and, she and, right. And, and there it is. Um, but to me, it doesn't follow that inductive reasoning gets you to the opposite conclusion where it's like a person can't do that. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Maybe this character can. Hey, yeah. it's it's and from land. It. We don't know. And that's it. That's all there is yeah. to it. Like I to me, there's nothing to be dissected there. I take yeah. I take I unless unless something very clear is presented to me, I take everything that every character says, which is their delivery of the words on the scripts that they've been given. Every single thing that every character says is true to them. Yeah. I believe it. I believe it a hundred percent. There is no reason for me not to believe it. If I'm distrustful of every single character and suspicious of every character, I'm probably not experiencing the story the way it's intended to be experienced. I think she is a, I think she is an old lady who was on the bus and she's lived through a whole bunch of years and she knows she's close to the end. So she is take, she's kind of another example of the Randall thing. Yeah. It, yeah. It all it does it's it's a it's a bit of a thought experiment. It's like, well, what would someone who's at the end of their life, who's terminally ill, who's nearing the end, who gets told this is your fate, here's where you are, how does a person like that take it? How do they behave? Do they thrash about? Do they kick and scream? Do they question everything? Maybe they don't. Maybe they just take it in stride and go, "Okay, if this is where I am, then I'm just going to be chill." And maybe the person who's chill is capable of relating to people and experiencing things and noticing things that other people can't. Again, that might, that might be part of the bigger puzzle. Part of the bigger puzzle might be pulling people in who are just chilling the F out about the whole thing and saying, what have you noticed? What have right. you seen yeah. from your perspective? Are we listening to you? Are we, are we giving you time and space to share with us your observations? Maybe we're not. Maybe we're just being dismissive in a way, if I can get philosophical about it. Um, m maybe maybe the audiences, these fans, maybe their reaction to these characters is a bit of a reflection of the challenges that the characters are experiencing themselves. Like instead of taking all these characters at face value and saying, what is this experience and what would what would it be like to me if I was in the middle of it? What would what parts of my character would it bring out instead of like questioning all these characters as if they're all trying to fool us and fool each other we're going to miss all those really cool interesting tidbits that come out of the come out of the story like that that right. to me that's where story lives that's where narrative that's where narrative lives that's where an emotional journey lives i actually buy her i don't think she's suspect at all i i have not for a second <laughs> thought that tilly was suspect i'm sorry but i just don't yeah. i think i think that she's just a new ingredient to the soup and and she's going to have something to add and something to well, something to bring. And she did in this season. She did. Yeah. It's, it's funny you should say that because I, I forget where I read it or I, I think it might have been Liz that told. No, I don't know if it was Liz Saunders that told us this. I don't think it was um, when she did that dance in the rain. Yeah. That was all impromptu. That wasn't even part of the normal story. uh Cause that's just the kind of lady that she is in general, like her real, have you ever worked with her? Um, the actress? No, no. Oh, okay. I, I just didn't know. Cause you are the, the mayor of, you know, Halifax. Yeah, but and I, I will, I will say, I will say this though. Like if you've, if you like, there's nobody going around the, like the time, time is of such an incredible premium. It's such time is of such a valuable essence when you're making these things, you got a crazy schedule, like oh. for someone to be walking around and going to all the different actors and sitting down, have a conference, going to background actors, going to the set decorators, going to the production design and saying, OK, you got to make sure that this is over here and that's over there. And we're going to have all these Easter eggs and background actors. You got to make sure that you have this facial expression and that facial expression. You better go over here and go over there. No one's doing that. No one's do. No one's doing that. Wait, like hold it's, on. It, like it, like you, it, they're trying to, they're trying to tell a very. Uh, it's actually quite a. I think that on any of these kind of shows, they're trying to tell a very straightforward story. And the question is, what is happening in the scene, in the scene itself between the actors? What is the, what is the beat? What's the story beat that's being communicated? What is the emotional experience of the actors? And 
and and everybody involved kind of has to take their own place in it at face value. You have to believe that what you're doing is is truly what you're doing. So right. Bitly Bitly um, says when Tilly calls Christy Quincy first day before she does an autopsy, sketchy. No, it actually isn't for this reason. The first day she knew Chris, she knew her girlfriend Marilee, and she knew that whoever lived there was the doctor and. And if you're a, a person of a certain age, you know who Quincy, Dr. Dr. Quincy is. And I loved Quincy. I, I, yeah, yeah. Was a, I, I just think you're, you, you know, like Lizzie, sometimes you're reaching for stuff that isn't no, there. I, no, I, I get what Bob is saying. And the thing about it is that she might, I don't know, she might have, ESP or something like that. She's psychic or something. ESPN. And, and sensed that Fatima was pregnant. That's weird. No, it's not weird. I mean, while we're while Bob was talking, I'm like thinking about someone that I know that is pregnant now. And I told her that she was going to get pregnant. And it was before, you know, like they were trying and having no luck at all. And I was like, within a couple of months, this is happening. But the thing is like, she just acts weird to me. You know, like she just shows up like a signpost. Kenny's over here. Um, I just need to drop this off. I mean, yeah, she needed to drop the morphine off, but was there something more to her dropping the morphine off, knowing that Mary, Mary, ugh, Marielle was an addict? Like, did she already peg her on the bus? I mean, she didn't really have to drop it off. I don't know. It, it's just, to me, she's suspect. There's something off about her. And maybe she just has a higher sensitivity to this place. And is plugged into this place. Maybe she's just plugged into the earth. I don't know. Okay, so I need to I need to get myself yelled at. I did forget Quincy wasn't a doctor. Well, he was a medical examiner. He was a doctor. Right. But, yeah, Quincy. But, the and that's kind of right. you're right. That is kind no, of no. He was a doctor. It was Doctor Quincy, but, but he, he was, was a medical examiner. But that's then, the but but, sure. yeah, but yeah, sure. But the but the person's point was then she ends up doing Christy ends up doing an autopsy the next day. That that yeah, is a coincidence. I get it. Yeah, no, I, mean, I think you're right. I think it's a it's a it's a you know like there's a person of a certain generation that would you know if there was a if there was a defense lawyer in the town oh my in God. Fromville, yeah. if there was a defense lawyer in the town, there's a character of a certain generation that would refer to that person as Matlock. I was thinking the same. Thing. Or Perry Mason. But there's but there's a person of another generation that wouldn't. It's a, to me yeah. to me it's like it's a generationally relatable, yeah. appropriate reference for that character. It doesn't signify anything yeah. shifty. And again and again I would say like it, it, there there are probably all kinds of shifty behaviors, assuming that they're motivated and purposeful and directed by the actor, or or that they're actually instructed to do it. Which again I, I have a hard time with. Um, just just practically speaking, I have a very hard time with that. Um, I, I think a lot of it can be explained by the fact that this is a very unnatural, even from an acting perspective, even from an acting perspective, like mm -hmm. as an actor, you're told to do things that human beings would do in an unimaginable, unbelievable ish type scenario where, where, where part of the fun of it is going, how would people behave? Yeah. What would they do? How would they yeah. act? What would they? And again, I, I, I think if, if Tilly's doing anything out of the ordinary, Tilly's doing out of the ordinary things from the perspective of someone who's not yet situated in a place in their life where they've kind of given up on all of the hassles and the conflict and the, you know, like the tension and that they're just like, this is my fate and I accept yeah. it. And, and, and if this is where I end up, this is where I end up. What am I going to spend there? And that probably, I would suggest that probably is what, what motivates a lot of behaviors and ways of speaking and ways of relating to other characters and way, and it's, some of it is baked in in the writing that someone who doesn't quite get that, who hasn't seen that or experienced it or can't possibly relate to it yet, they're going to look at it and they're going to go, we're... I'm cooey! <laughs> 
Oh boy. Yeah, we're gonna try to get to everything tonight, yeah, folks. Yeah. I know you're putting yeah. stuff in the chat. Um, we may or may not get to everything, and trust me, we're gonna have other people that are gonna come on. It's just the problem with this this awesome show is it's got a lot of meat on the bone. So much and you can only you yeah. can only I don't want to yeah. be here for five hours no, as much as I'd love to be. Also this is you can you can label this episode the buzzkill episode. Well, yeah, I mean, Bob, Bob, this you is are where Bob shits all over every theory and says, "Oh man, no, you guys are you guys are cooked." You know, you're you're just you're free. You're you're doing that old school thing with VCRs where you like pause the movie and you you yeah. lean in really close and you're like, "Can I see the seams in the rubber mask and the alien?" You know, yeah. like you're, it's you're doing thing. stuff like that. You know, it's like, "Oh, wait a minute, that alien has a zipper in the back of their thing. Maybe that means no, it's just a costume." Hey, hey Bob, That's this why. is what I've yeah. had to deal with all season long. <laughs> all it's season fun, long, though. it is fun though. I you you know like you hear you hear me go on about the the video game thing. I'm like you know I'm like I, I it's a no. it is a mystery. It's a gen, it's a genuine mystery. I just think the mystery is in the world. I don't think the mystery is in the characters. Okay, I, do, me... I don't think I don't think anyone is suspect. Frankly, I'm I'm going to go on the record and say okay. I don't find anyone suspect. In fact. I, I, to me, if there's a mole or if someone's suspect or if someone's villainous or if someone's being shifty, um, it kind of screws up the show for me personally a little bit. Like I, I want this to be a show about a really weird, bizarre, messed up, maybe magical, maybe otherworldly type place where regular ordinary people from our world get put into. Yeah. And, it could be an experiment. It could be a game. It could be great. I'm I'm chill with all of that stuff. Yeah. But I'm I'm not. I I just I don't think there's a whole lot of value or import in dissecting the the characters and trying to figure out their allegiances and their, you know, this one's on the inside. This one knows something. Like I don't know. Like uh, to me to me that makes it a different kind of show than the one that I think it is. And maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe I'll be totally wrong. I just that. think she's weird. But let me just ask you this. Um, were when you were getting ready to execute your lines from the script they could you ad lib or did you have to say them as written i mean i i said them as written i mean you, you have to remember too that uh I, you know my stuff was being done very much close to the beginning right and 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 at best like a, a couple of months into into production. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I think there were a few little bits and pieces that got changed and some different words. We, we definitely, there were definitely some things, there are things that get cut. Yeah. There are things that get cut. There yeah. are things that get filmed that then get cut. There are things that get edited in ways that you just don't foresee that you can't right. anticipate. Like when you're, when you're delivering your performance, you don't necessarily know what the thing is going to look like. And honestly, I don't think a, even, even the, the writing and the directors and the, they don't even know, like there's a whole other process of putting the story together and editing after right. the fact, after right. it's done. So it's not really like the people on the ground in the moment, you're just shaping the clay that's going to get turned into the experience that the viewers get put into like to to go all the way back to that point in the process and look at what an actor is doing on the day and say oh everybody there knows everybody knows <laughs> what's well, going on when we get when we get known. john when we get john yeah. in the chair here where you are which is not happening anytime soon we, we will we will make sure we're like we know yeah. that you know yeah, yeah. that we know John John Griffin's not going to say squat. He's, he's not, not going to say he, he's he doesn't want to take our call. <laughs> no, he's not going to tell you a word. I I I mean he's yeah, he's and but I mean, you know, I will say like I I my my expectate my hope but really truly my expectation is that he's got something cooked up in his head that is really interesting that that will amount to something much more than just a puzzle room to solve your way out of. Right. Yeah. If it if it's just a puzzle room to solve your way out of, it will end up being kind of uninteresting 
I think in I, the end, I agree. I agree yeah, with that. It's got to be. I, it's got to be more than that. That's why I say I don't. I don't think there's a lot of import to the theories that little things that characters do from moment to moment contain a whole lot of clues or a whole lot. I really don't think that. That's so, it's just my opinion. I I, yeah. I I I don't think they do. So Bob, one of your fans wants to tell you that you don't want. You shouldn't be the the showrunner. They shouldn't have you doing your promo of the show because <laughs> your optimism of, of this is well we're getting I, I i this is an interesting point though this is interesting i actually i actually think that i'm i'm giving the storytellers a lot more credit and and praise as storytellers because i think i think they're doing something much more interesting than just building a roller coaster ride i agree right? roller coaster ride you get yeah. on it you have thrills and chills and you scream and stuff yeah. it's like oh my god yeah. is that a thing like and then off, off you go like, i mean i i just you know. i just hope that they're whether it's a five-year run or a three whatever year run it is they get to one tell their story but two that they get a chance to make sense so that the viewers feel like is it something that they did to get there i'd love to yeah. know why they're there I'm not it's necessarily how they get out, but why? What's the common thread? Yeah. Because the one yeah. thing about this show that's driving me nuts is they're from all over the country. And they all see the same, they all see the same tree. Tree. Yeah, I'm I'm, fa I'm fascinated by it. I really am. Yeah. I'm truly yeah. and I'm I'm totally in for it. And I'm dying for season three like everybody else. Yeah. And I wish it was starting yeah. next week. Like I'm any anyone who thinks that I'm sort of anyone who thinks I'm shitting on the show is is mistaken, mistaken. In, yeah in, i don't think you are at what all I'm saying yeah i i i, I just are at all yeah and again as i said the 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 theories are fun and i would not dissuade someone from making theories and coming if that's the fun part of it if that's the, if that's the fun game of it I... no i know it's not the Uncooey! same thing. Uncooey! oh he's like the Ankui master today so yeah. folks listening to the podcast, every time we say on Kui, we encourage you to take a drink so that Bob can come back <laughs> to civilization from Canada because he's still drunk drink. from Canada Day because it's an all month long deal. <laughs> Months That's long. Right. Yeah. You know, I hope that it is just some kind of supernatural yep. thing, like a trap that they all fell into, you know, like. Yeah, I, I know it's really odd, you know, we, you know, Arizona, Detroit, um, Florida, Texas, like, you know, uh, Montana, they're all, you know, their origin is so different. But I mean, yeah. there could be vortexes that open at particular times. And if you're there, you end up in this place. Yep. You know, oh, like, sure. yeah, absolutely. So pay your I'm, taxes I'm totally, or you don't go in the void. Has nothing to do with taxes, but <laughs> <laughs> I just, I mean, like. Now there is, there is something that happened this season that, uh, so I was of the view that it was random. That, right. it was, that it was just like, okay, maybe, maybe there's, maybe there's an opening quote unquote opening that moves. Yeah. And it's just kind of moving around and there's some randomness to it, like a bingo ball machine. Okay, yeah. cool. That's neat. Something happens at the beginning of season two that doesn't necessarily disprove that as a theory, but it does. Ankui! Everybody take a drink, folks. I, um, I've got a drop. She's got one drop left. That's and he looks like he's saying, I, ah. I just, during the freeze moment, I took a shot of, uh, of tequila. So that's go. what I do. Yeah. Um, but I, what I was going to say that the thing that happened, the thing that happens at the beginning of season two, that to me is seismic. Yeah. It's truly seismic is, mm -hmm. um, uh, Christie's Christie's fiance showing up. Yeah. Yeah. Cause exactly. it's like, well, wait a minute. What are, what are the odds? Like, what are the, yeah. and they, they do, they talk about it on the show. It's not like the characters of the show don't seize on that. There are, there are a couple yeah. that do. Right. Yeah. Um, but to me, that's sort of like, okay, that is a significant piece of evidence about something that i hope gets like again to, to your point yeah. alex like as a viewer i hope that that gets addressed in a substantive meaningful way i hope i hope that's not something that it was like we conveniently did this so that christy has a love triangle issue like yeah. to, to, to me that's a little bit too convenient given the odds 
that someone like her is going to show up one day on a on a yeah. bus it's because Either she was brought there or it's a, like that's the part that makes me go okay from a probability standpoint this is significant yeah is significant. And, and it's not impossible but right. it could happen right. but the fact that it opened you know in the same area more than once in a short period of time like that's only been six months right you know, even, and then even, I mean, even even the same area is only part of it. Like yeah. even if, even if the odds, it, well, once you consider the odds that it opens in the same area, uh, given yeah. how much territory it has to operate in, what are the odds that at that moment someone connected to one of these other characters just happens to be there at that exact moment? Like it it is something that implies more of a connection to the the characters tether to the outside world but again the sample size is small it's just christy right. we haven't seen we haven't seen it from anybody else so yeah. well there's a theory the the going day, around we'll, yeah there is that other theory going around that elgin is the baby of fatima and ellis ellis because he saw that in the bathroom when he that's the other thing there should be no tubs there should be no bodies of water in from because nothing and the other thing is donna is not allowed to leave colony house at night because every right. time she does her friggin' exactly. real husband does so much goddamn shit yeah dale is on the shit list with me yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Someone, someone should Cliff be, taking might be a good guy but yeah. dale's on the shit list man yeah. that oh guy can't God. find it. he's got such a hard on for friggin' cordian i mean for uh for um Alice, Alice, it's like, come on, man. Yeah. yeah, he's a he's a yeah, he's a wily commuter. You gotta keep your yeah. eye on that guy. He would be a problem. He would definitely yeah. be a problem. Yeah. I wouldn't no. I wouldn't be leaving his I wouldn't be leaving his door. But no, it's it's true. I I I I, th I always thought that that um I always thought that that theory was reaching a little bit too. I didn't I didn't see again, although I mean that might be interesting, but again, as with the mole thing, my question would be like, well, well why? Like what yeah, well, see, purpose, I could see that. Could, I could see that happening yeah. more than the whole mole thing, because mm. that would create a whole time thing to that my mystical stuff. Um, that said, and I do want to kind of shift it because I know a lot of the. I mean, it was a big deal with the um, with the show this season. Was so last season, meaning season one, um, when Boyd and Sarah were in the woods. They right. saw the tree of bottles. Yeah. They broke a bottle that believed was her brother's. And one of the fears was his fears was cicadas. And that's what kind of possibly was the, brought the cicadas upon them. Yeah, it brought yeah. the cicadas yeah. upon them. Um, yeah. First off, what did you guys think of cicadas in general as a terror uh, thing? And what do you think of that theory of those bottles are dead people's dream or fears? Um, does that, I mean, that, again, that's kind of an interesting twist when you look at it. Yeah. Could, could totally be like, I would, I would, I would buy it as a, you know, again, this is, this is my thing. Maybe somebody would be pretty quick or ready to shit all over this, but like my, to me, it's like, well, that, if that's one of the rules of the, of the game that they're in, you know, that, that, you know, different characters have different character profiles and that if a certain thing happens, that character profile manifests in some sort of threat. It's like, well, it sounds pretty programmable to me and something that I might expect to see in a write-up, you know, about a, a video game or something like that. Like to me, there's something, there's something compelling and interesting about that. That seemed, that seemed so deliberate to me that like Sarah relating the cicadas back to her brother's experience like yeah if, if if i was taking close notes that definitely would be something that i'd write and, and down they and did go, have dates oh, in okay. them they did have yeah. dates in them i'm not i'm not saying that they didn't have the dates in them i'm just saying that that was something that people were kind of saying and folks For we're sure. not we're not answering all the mysteries we don't know what the writers are going to do or whatever we're just kind of bringing bob in to shit on everything i mean uh justify <laughs> everything and then um we'll bring somebody so else that wants to just go down those deep dives as well now, um yeah now uh, i i just i yeah. i just thought that the cicadas were a kind of an interesting little thing because they are they're the most disgusting things ever they and were it was it was, out, it was out it was out of left field for me like i i you know there's such a regional 
there's got to be a real regional aspect to that too, right? Like I certainly don't think of cicadas as, I mean, I don't, I don't think we have them here. Like I, we don't have pass, they're not passports. That's why. Yeah, that's right. They're, they're not, um, I, they don't have dual citizenship. We, we, I mean, we have crickets and yeah. I don't think we're talking about the same insect, no. but we certainly, no. oh, cicadas no. are certainly not something we experience. They're like, so they're, yeah. Like this big Bob, like they're yeah. big. Yeah. Uh, huge. Like I saw a, you know, the exoskeleton of a molted cicada on a tree. And I'm like, yeah. Oh my God, that's more than I want to see. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I had yeah. one fly into me. I thought it was a yeah. bird that hit me. Yeah. Um, but I know that we've had them in Massachusetts when I lived there and they're definitely here in Georgia because that's where I've seen the exoskeleton and had one fly into me. Like they look like birds when they're flying. They're that mm, big. Mm. Do they well, swarm like that? Do they swarm people? I've only seen one or two. Like I haven't, I really haven't seen a lot of them. No, when I was a kid, we had, they come every like 27 years. They like okay. hibernate. Yeah. But okay. like we had them when I was a kid. It was, it was awful. I mean, oh, they wow. were everywhere you, you, and they're big. They were big they, suckers. They're big. They are. They're really big. And they're like this big, and they would run into you, and boom. And they have like no. They, they don't swarm. They're just everywhere, and they're like they're kind of like the most annoying things ever. Oh, they're it's loud. It's like when the so Red Sox loud. win. It's just the most annoying thing ever. <laughs> yeah. You know. I love it. Um, I love it. But no, I just. <laughs> it's, it, but they're Not like useless. Fan. They're just not, they're useless things. Yeah. But the but it the, is an interesting. It's a it's a very interesting choice to to yeah. to use to use those and it, and it was a real it was one of those things where um i mean the sound was interesting the sound, i mean i mean there 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 was an interesting implication of using cicadas as this sort of threatening element which really only lasts for a few episodes it's not like it's there from the very beginning but yeah. um it's because they they generate a sound that can go away yes yeah. And, and so, just... but I did like that moment. Like I remember in the last episode, the moment where it's like, oh, the sound is gone. Yeah. yeah. The characters kind of take note and they're like, oh, we don't, we don't hear that. Like as a viewer, you caught it just before the character did where you're like, oh, that sound isn't there. That means something has passed. Some, yeah. some threat of some kind has, has passed. And maybe now there's going to be something new which which i would which i would say makes this season distinct from the end of season one which is that we we really don't the end at the end of season one you had the rain you had the the tower and then you had the bus pull up and it was a bit of a cliffhanger well, like yeah the, the cliffhanger at the end of this season is a cliffhanger for for monica but it's it's not it's or tabitha sorry but it's it's not a cliffhanger for everyone like right. certainly they're going to wonder where she went assuming she did go somewhere but but Everyone, I don't know where everyone else stands. Well, like what, something yeah. else happened in season one that was kind of important. Hmm. You became an unemployed actor again. Yeah, that's true. Although I mean, I had other you got to other... control your drinking better. I was Come busy. on, Bob. I had other stuff. I had other stuff too. Yeah, you said Harold. I, okay. I got. I don't have time. I know. I was. I okay. mean, um, I yeah, it is. There, there was much of a cliffhanger beyond Tabitha. Like Boyd solves the music box problem. Well, yeah, there is Jade. Jade's well, lost in the cave. Well, he's just in the cave. He's like, just down there. He's, he's just, just in the cave. Yeah. yeah. But like, he's just in the cave. It's not really a cliffhanger. Um, the cicadas stop. Um, let's see. Um, and then the three. Alice, Alice and Fatima got married. And Alice and Fatima yeah. got married. And Don is there. But, okay. So wait, let's, just, house let's just take stock. You could, you, you, could, you could do a time jump after this season yeah, and it wouldn't could, it, finally. nothing really would be disrupted yeah no. yes you yeah. couldn't last season you had to pick up with that bus but this season you could all right yeah, yeah. all right i got a couple of, i got a couple of quick fire things because we're getting on the two hour mark and crazy too long i oh my really, god yeah. yeah and we haven't even like scratched the surface and folks if you're listening to this how we're gonna you? we're gonna come back and do this again because there's just too much, um, and <laughs> it's like it's like four o'clock in the morning for Bob, and um, <laughs> I don't know if Bob wants to come back again. 
<laughs> or well, you said, what are you talking about? No, all right. no but no, that's I it. We're talking with Bob Dude, Mann, the most I optimist. I here every it. week. Love it. We're Love talking to Bob yeah. Mann, the most optimistic, theoristic uh, member of our team today. Um, yeah. And I'm uh, loving this show and loving and, and just taking yeah. the show down, down for I'm down just because I'm down for criticisms and down for shitting on theories and and being like, oh, you guys too much time in your hand or whatever. None of that <laughs> means I don't love the show. I'm loving, I'm loving yeah. the show. I'm getting a yes. kick. I love the performances. I hope I hope people oh. keep coming back and be given stuff to do. It's just yeah, it's I love amazing. it. And 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 it is it is as as you as you two have no doubt discovered in your own way up to this point, but. There are some really, really lovely people involved in in making. No, the they're show. they're all they're all amazing. Honestly, yeah, yeah. they really are. It's such we a have nice been work. blessed. Yeah, we have been yeah. blessed. Yeah, from from top to bottom, and and I say this, Liz was the nicest one of the bunch in terms of this. She so said great. yes first, yeah. and yeah. then so and then some guy Bob said yes, and then the and then the rest of it is history. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, everybody's been wonderful. Such wonderful nice people wonderful Such nice people yeah and yeah. talented people nice. they're talented well, they're talented oh, and Haley, they're yeah. you know this yeah. week i i've been on set with ann dowd for a couple of days and but i think um alex and i have compared liz saunders to her multiple mm -hmm. times when we've been talking and i was sitting i was having a conversation with ann and um all of a sudden, I'm just like, oh, my God, to have Ann Dowd and Liz Saunders in a buddy road trip comedy might be funny. That might be hysterical. Sure, why not? Yeah, well, why not? I keep saying to everybody, there shouldn't be Harold that's nominated. It should be Liz and Scott and Harold, because I yeah. really do believe maybe I'm drinking the Kool-Aid too much. But I think that they put the work in this year to to deserve some, yes, good performances. Yeah, some, oh, some God. great praise. Um, Scott about killed me. He just like the the man child, you know, and then confronting his past like that just about killed me. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was compelling. Beautiful. Okay, yeah. so we really didn't even get to Victor that much, but I, and we're going to get to him next time because I, I like I said, but I just have a couple other things that I'd I'd love for you guys and the viewers to kind of think about um you've got the 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 logo that jade's been looking at all season long yeah, yeah the logo at the hospital is very similar it's very similar i, I there's not a lot of you know it, it's just similar um i believe i think like you guys believe that she hasn't left the world uh but she's in another part of it i think the boy in white needs to get it needs to get his mom and gets the crap beat out of him because he's a little he's a, i don't know if he's good or do you think the boy in white is good or bad both of that's you a, that's a it's a great question i i uh, i i've not been given any i don't think we've been given enough information yeah that's like, what to I know yeah. if he's, to know he's good or bad yeah it's yeah. tough because when you look at symbolism white is always the good guy and there's just something about it that is telling me that the color is betraying us that we're being misdirected yeah yeah it could be yeah for sure. i don't evil. know what it is i really don't know i mean it, it's just a, a feeling a hunch whatever it is but there's just something about it yeah you know well he thinks he's a hundred percent evil um but that's okay right, right. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah he's not yeah. evil he's evil um, yeah, yeah. Do you think do you think that um we should have more Victor backstory next season? I I I do find his whole thing interesting. Like yeah. he he's he's he he definitely is a mystery kind of to be un, unfurled a little bit. There's some you there's some interesting there's some interesting things going on going on with him for sure that I I would love to I would love to know more about. Like I'm, I'm really interested in knowing more about him for sure. I mean, how cool was it that he has his own trailer filled with cookies? Well, not filled with cookies, but filled with all sorts of stuff. I think we're uncooing Bob. There we go. He's no, back. There you go. back. Yeah, yeah. No, but how how cool is it that he has his own trailer? You know, yeah, he, he inhabits. Trailer. He he he's the one character who inhabits more of the world than. Yeah than anybody else 
Like he, he, he knows about things. He knows where to go. He knows where to find stuff. He's got stashes. He's got yeah. drawings. He's got memories. Like there's, there's, he's, uh, you know, like I, I, that's why I say, like, I think that, you know, put, put him together with another character, likewise situated, suddenly you start on un unlocking things. The, the, the barrier to doing that, which serves the story, which serves the narrative is that he, he is still kind of stunted yeah, uh, emotionally. And, and he's very traumatized and he's not interested in reliving it. You know, he's not yeah. interested in going through it again um, as, as, as one is when they go through something like that or, or as some people are, I guess. And so that's, what's, dri that's what's driving his closed, closed mouthedness. Something has got to come along and open right. him up. And I feel like it's going to be someone like Sarah, or it's going to be someone you know, it's not it's not going to be a character who's trying to get answers. Do you think Victor's story being exposed could cause more spoilerism? I mean, I think so. Yeah. Like, I think I think that I think there's stuff that's gone on with him that is going to fill out the fill out the story of what's going on there and, and may be helpful. But, you know, yeah, I feel like where we're going with that particular story is that that someone someone's got to call like look, uh, uh, there's there's a neat little juxtaposition between what um jade does and what tabitha does relative yeah. to victor jade's looking for answers yeah and right. he, appre he apprehends that victor is the key to answering some of his questions and that's how he treats them he treats them as a as a, a means to an answer and so there's no you know like he he it's he has a promising start with the whole violin playing and stuff like that, but he eventually pushes Victor to a place where Victor clams up. But then Tabitha comes along and she kind of treats him a little bit more like a, a wounded human being. And suddenly we start getting somewhere. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like, so I think that's like someone, someone's got to kind of scoop him up and right. Like that's why he, that's why he's so taken with, with uh, the little, the little guy with, um, Ethan. Uh, yeah, with Ethan, Ethan because he's like he, he's more like a peer, right? Like right. He, he he's on the same level with them, so he's not gonna he's not gonna push him in the same way that they the grown ups are gonna push him. And I find I, I find it compelling. I feel like it, I feel like it's got a lot of narrative potential. Yeah, yeah, I loved the when Ethan give gave him a picture of himself. He drew adorable. A of himself. It was that was adorable. a cute, that was a cute was scene, so and he wouldn't take it, and he's like, oh, "That's only for dead people," but. Yeah. So, so Bob, we're going to wrap it up. What are, yeah. what are some of the things that you're uh, promoting these days besides King and Prawn? Oh man. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Um, uh, we're, we're a pro we're, we're hoping to, I don't know when we're going to have season two of King and Prawn done, but I'm working on the music for that. And I wrote a, I wrote a decent chunk of it. And I was in awesome. another show. I was in another show that filmed back in May, which I don't know when that assembly is going to be done, but I think the fall um, so that would be on Bell here in Canada and on Out TV here in Canada. And then I have a film project coming up um, uh, next month uh, and and over the next little bit that I'm working on. And did, uh, did and you then, have everything on your website? Like, are you still doing dates? Because I know you do dates. Sometimes you do dates for you know what this 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 summer is a bit up and all over the place. So I don't have any dates right now for no. my for any comedy stuff. I really don't have anything lined up. I've sort of stepped back a little bit because of how unpredictable my next month and a half is. Um, the last thing I did was a couple of weeks ago, and then I said, okay, I'm not sure. I just don't want to commit to anything or sign up for any gigs or shows because I don't know. I don't know what July and August are going to, are going to look I, like. I totally understand. But I totally understand. We got understand. shows like Sullivan's Crossing and I don't, I don't know if my character is done on that show or not. I don't think he is, but I don't know, actually know that for sure. So I've got to, I've got to leave some space for that. But, um, and then I, we, we hopefully will be working on, you know, finger uh, with season three of King and Pawn in the fall. Um, yeah. So, you know, that might be a whole thing unto itself and i've been we involved just in the have writing to cover it too, so. we might just yeah. have to cover it you know just yeah. cover yeah. it you have to find it alex at least sullivan crossing is coming on hulu yeah it's coming in, it's fall. coming to see you and it's going to be on on hulu yeah, yeah. we've got we'll we've be got, able to see it yeah. it'll be great i think we'll be able to get a copy once it's done i don't know yeah and the show um moonshine that was i'm cool i'm cool So yeah, folks, just so you know, we we've we're we're gonna be wrapping up in just a minute. Um, whenever whenever the uh, 
He's back. The the, the, back. the satellites come back from Canada. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. I'm good. He's back. Yeah. No, yeah. but that's great. I mean, it sounds like you got a lot of stuff on the the, the back burner or on the front burner, and uh, you got a graduating yeah. son. I think I saw. Yeah, high school last week, and I got a kid who graduated elementary school last week, and awesome. yeah, all kinds of all kinds of congratulations. Fun Thanks. So what's, yeah. What's Thanks. the first thing you tell your kid when he graduates elementary school? Get a job. Yeah. Start yeah. doing your own taxes. It pretty like, much. Here are, forms. here are the forms. Fill them out. Yeah, um, here's how you. Yeah, here's how you. You cook. You cook eggs. But yeah. folks, Whatever. if you if you enjoy what Bob is doing, please check him out on Sullivan's Crossing and all the other stuff that he's doing. If you enjoyed what we're doing, you know, hit that subscribe button just like we did before. Hit the bell so that you can get um, all of our our stuff because we're gonna have a bunch of interviews that are coming up. Um, we've got okay. a really special one that we're not gonna release yet, but it is a pretty special one with. Cool. Um, uh it's bob he's coming back again no it's somebody <laughs> it's somebody a little bit a little bit smaller than bob when it comes to uh the the key, marquee but no it, it's gonna be fun and um Great. again uh bob thank you so much for oh. everything that you've done for us and i mean that you've anytime we've had any type of posting you repost stuff you've been you. super fun. You, super you've fun. been you've been one of our biggest cheerleaders and god knows we need all the help we can get. And after this, it's only going to get bigger because your positive attitude with the theories. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's great. And I want to I say I celebrate the all the fan. Like I, I, I'm not complaining. I love, I love how many people uh, are into this and debating about it and talking about it. That's never a bad thing. It's yeah. it's only it's only a good thing because these people are watching. They're interested and they're. They're having a lot of fun, having a good time. So, yeah, nothing, nothing but positive vibes. Around, well, folks, around it, the, it's getting late, so the bell's ringing. So, let our famous uh, roller coaster constructor take us out. Get you home. Let's go. Come on, get in your house. Let's go. Come on. <laughs>